Hi, this is Dhirendra. In this video, we are going to talk about the life of Abraham Kareem. He is known as the founding father of drone technology in America. And why he is called so? He has been the inventor, he has been the designer or conceptualizer of Predator drone. He has been the designer for Albatross, Amber. So he and his small team had been able to do wonders which we are hearing right now in the field of drone technology commercially. Currently he is working on optimum speed tilt rotor in order to create vertical landing and takeoff with the payload and range of other capabilities so as to use it commercially. So these are like going to change the pilots required will be less in number with the advent of time and because the technology will be able to do most of these activities. Uh, so let's understand how his career impacted the overall growth of drone technology in America. So this boy was born in Baghdad. His family moved to Israel when Israel was formed in 1951-52. So when he was a kid, he was fascinated by models of the aeroplanes and designing intricate parts as he had one teacher who sat in one of the planes in World War II. So he used to narrate those stories which further grew his interest in plane models and building designs and things like that. He says that by the age of eight he knew that he wanted to be a mechanical engineer as he always used to play with the toys. But by 13-14 he had uh, got grown clear in his mind that he had to do something in aeronautics field. So he wanted to be a pilot but because of his poor eyesight he finally chose aeronautical engineering wherein he went on to study aeronautical engineering in Israel Institute of Technology. So he, as he was working in uh, Air Force for 9 years he learned to, to design and maintain the aircraft and also continued his childhood interest. But after 9 years or so he left Air Force. He joined uh, Israel Aircraft Industries, a company who is the manufacturer of planes and drones and things like that. And soon he moved towards the top. Within the 4 years of his joining he was to be made executive vice president but he always had this desire to do something else. So in 1974 despite the protest from his seniors and his higher ups he decided to leave IAI and he started to manufacture on his own. He, he kind of didn't like the corporate culture or he didn't like the foundation so he moved away. But the next three years were quite harsh for him because although he was giving different designs for drones all of them were not being accepted by IAI as it was the sole government supplier to, for the drones to Israel government. So as a result of which he finally decided to move to America to try out his venture in America. And in the meantime he also has got around 20 patents under his name for designing for different material components or for defining sir, subsystem innovations or mechanical devices. So this shows the talent this man had while he was moving ahead in his career. So he moved on to US. In 1977 he joined a small company called Developmental Sciences Inc. which was a fairly small company and which had offered Israel a drone system in 1973. So that, so his that connection came into handy and he got the job. So he basically was working on projects which was DARPA funded, a government funded agency which was using funds in order to develop UAV, unmanned aircraft vehicles. Karim left uh, Developmental Sciences Inc. also after some time and he decided to start his own manufacturing of these vehicles. Of three people were able to finally make something which was 200 pounds weight and would carry a television camera at the nose. According to DARPA calculations, it would stay aloft a uh, stunning 56 hours. Karim named it Albatross. So this was the evolution of first commercially successful drone technology or drone named Albatross. During Development Sciences Inc., he had met Ira Kun, who was impressed by his talent as he had asked for 
some work which he had resolved with much more efficiency and designing abilities which had impressed Irakun who told DARPA director Bob Fossum that Abraham Karim is a national asset. DARPA ended up funding Albatross. So this way it led to that DARPA ended up funding the Albatross, their first drone, 200 pound drone made with three persons. The drone's exceptional performance led the agency in 1985 to contract with Karim's new company called Leading Systems Inc. Navy Secretary John Lehman and the champions of the Southern Commandant in US wanted Amber to be developed as they were looking for ways to tackle uh, infiltration, immigration from uh, south, from the drug peddler trafficking and things like that. So these were the reasons which finally led to the development of drone technology. Although Amber uh, was light, its further successor called Predator was twice as heavy and it had a V-shaped wings at the back, V-shaped stabilizers at the back of its body so as to avoid crushing, crash landing and also to give stability. By 1988, Karim was expecting to build a large number of UAVs for the Navy. With GPS becoming available and other key technologies gaining momentum, interest in UAVs were growing. Leading systems now occupied 2 lakh or 200,000 square yards, square feet of industrial space in Irvine, California and had a contract with on an airfield near El Mirage Dry Lake. In June 1988, in June 1989, in June 1988, Amber flew over El Mirage at 5,500 5, 5, 5, 5, square feet above the sea level for 38 hours. Navy dropped a plan to. So the situations created a such a situation wherein Karim had to sell off his own company. The Predator success paved the way for development of subsequent UAVs and established Karim as a pioneer in the field. The drone impact on military operation and its effectiveness is gathering, in gathering crucial information, intelligence propelled a prominence worldwide. Of his other notable achievement is the development of Ace-160 Hummingbird, an unmanned helicopter that showcased groundbreaking capabilities. The Hummingbird demonstrated extended flight endurance, vertical takeoff and landing, and versatile payload options, making it ideal for various applications including reconnaissance, surveillance and supply missions. The OSTR technology has the potential to revolutionize the aviation industry by providing increased versatility and efficiency in both civilian and military operations. So if you see the life of this man, you will understand how his career has revolutionized the drone technology in America and this man has single-handedly led to the development of Albatross, Amber, Predator, which are the pioneers now and which and using these models, using these systems, only further new drones are being built with new higher efficiency, higher capabilities in order to reach out to those areas of say uh, unmanned explorations even to different countries, greater, gather intelligence and be useful in various commercial levels. Thank you for your time and attention. Hope this video has been useful in terms of understanding how the career growth of one single individual called Abraham Karim has led to the overall growth of different drone systems developed in US military and which are being sold to different parts of the world and they are being utilized at for different reasons. Thank you for your time and patience. Hope it has been useful.